Good morning, everyone. We'll call the Committee on Commerce, Consumer, uh, Commerce and Consumer Protection to order this morning. We have a number of House bills on our agenda. And for the interest of people that may be watching us, if for any reason our hearing is disrupted because of technical difficulties, we will reconvene our hearing tomorrow at 9.30. Uh, today is Tuesday, March the 16th, and we are both on video conference and here in conference room 229. Uh, joining me on um, the screen of committee members, I saw Senator Nishihara, uh, Senator Misalucha, and hopefully others will be joining us as we go through our agenda. Uh, any members of CPN that I may have missed that wants to wave and let me know that you're here? All right, let's go forward. The first item on our hearing no, uh, agenda this morning is House Bill 352, House Draft 1. This is relating to secondhand dealers. Clarifies that the secondhand dealers law applies to a secondhand dealer's operation of an automated recycling kiosk that only accepts handheld electronic devices for recycling. Specifies the retention requirements for secondhand dealers that operate an automated recycling kiosk and the HD1 has an effective date of 1-1-2050. Uh, let's hear first from um, Tina Yamaki, Retail Merchants of Hawaii. Tina, are you on our call? Tina is not available, oh, Senator Baker. Okay, uh, Tina submitted comments uh, in support. We have, uh, hopefully joining us on Zoom, Jonathan Spiker, SCAR, Hawaii Pawnbrokers Association. Jonathan, are you there? Hi, good morning, Chair Baker, yes. Please proceed. Uh, thank you, I'll just be uh, 30 seconds. On behalf of the Hawaii Pawnbrokers Association, you know, we strongly oppose this bill uh, for the following reasons. Can I have uh, this bill seeks to apply um, automated recycling kiosk laws to HRS Chapter 486, Pawnbrokers and Secondhand Dealers laws. Uh, these are two different industries that are completely different, recycling versus pawnbrokers and secondhand dealers. Uh, recycling in Hawaii is governed by many other statutes, such as HRS Chapter 339, 342G, uh, 342I, and HRS Chapter 445-231. Also, I believe uh, before uh, Chair Baker, we had mentioned that there was, there is no, currently there is no recycling kiosk in Hawaii, period. Uh, so, in closing, adding recycling kiosks to HRS Chapter 486M uh, will be very confusing. It will result in different industries being governed uh, by the same statute. Uh, so, we ask that you uh, do not uh, pass this bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we also are joined by Mr. Richard Dan, comma, I'm alone. Richard, are you there? Uh, unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes. Please proceed. Thank Thank you, Senator Baker and members of the committee. Um, I appreciate your service and hard work. Um, this bill confuses 486M. I'm 100% in support of what Mr. Spiker and the Hawaii Pumber Association has said. I stand by my existing testimony. Uh, uh, on pr at present on Maui, there is a, an electronics recycler called eCycle. And at present on Maui, there are secondhand dealers that take in cell phones, iPads, all different forms of electronics. I think there's going to be a confusion between this new kiosk law and the existing law that's going to be hard for us to manage. Now, most of us here on Maui are mom and pop shops that uh, stay within the law, make sure everybody, uh, you know, crosses the T's and dots the I's, and, and there are no issues with the existing law. If you want to make a law for these people who this international corporation wants to come in, please go ahead, make the law, but make it separate from 486M and make it so that it doesn't affect what we already have. We're having a hard enough time right now alone making a living. To have more confusion to the law doesn't serve anybody's purpose. That's all I have to say. I'm opposed to this, I'm opposed to this bill. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, Bonnie Garcia, Eco ATM. I believe Bonnie is on the call. Yes, good morning, Madam Chairwoman and members of the committee. My name is Bonnie Garcia, 
I'm the Director of Legislative Affairs for ECOATM. We strongly support the bill with amendments, and we heard the concerns of the stakeholders. The amendments clarify that this bill only affects automated recycling kiosks. Uh, the reason that it is in this section of the code is because under the state of Hawaii law, as in 49 other states, when you buy or sell items, you need to report those. And that's why these amendments would fit into the existing law. In addition, we heard the concerns about the, uh, you know, the information that was going to be made available. So in my testimony, I submitted um, the amendments which would first verify a seller's identification, securely store the items within the kiosk, record images of the seller, uh, must possess computer record keeping and transmittal capabilities and, and it would electronically report those to the police department. I want to point out that under existing law HRS 486M, the minimum retention period is 30 days in the state of Hawaii, could be reduced at uh, the discretion of the police chief to 15 days for those dealers that have computerized record keeping. However, we are sticking with the 30 days to allow for uh, enough time to return any device that becomes of interest to the law enforcement community within five business days. And we've also put it in the code at no cost to any law enforcement agency. <clears throat> I also want to address uh, some uh, concerns expressed by the Honolulu Police Department regarding the ability to have an actual device to inspect the automated kiosk in this code, we also added an amendment that would require the automated kiosk to be opened remotely. So at any time, the police department can inspect the item within the kiosk uh, to pursue an item that they suspect of being stolen. In addition, pursuant to uh, 708-802, property recovered in offenses against property rights, uh, it allows for photographic evidence uh, to be used. And that photograph is deemed competent evidence of the item photograph and admissible in any proceeding, hearing, or trial um, for violation of the chapter. So we believe that we have adequate safeguards in place to allow for not only the immediate inspection, but records within 24 hours and retrieval of the item if it becomes necessary for law enforcement purposes at no cost. And I'm available to answer any questions and thank you so much for your time this morning. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. We also have late testimony from the Honolulu Police Department uh, in opposition to the bill as written. Members, do you have any questions for any of our testifiers that are on the call with us? If not, uh, I want to note the um, presence of Senator Nishihara and Senator Joy San Buenaventura. So thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, members, let's move forward. The House bill, and we're also joined by Senator Gil Riviere. Um, let's uh, go to the next item on our agenda. That is House Bill 149. This is relating to gift certificates. Clarifies that cards issued by a county for the purposes of paying transit fares and county fees and other uses are not subject to the state's unfair and deceptive. Uh, practices regulations relating to gift certificates. Um, let's see. My, I'm not sure my, my, uh, my um, device is going to be cooperative on this one, but I see that we have a representative from the City and County of Honolulu Transportation Services Department of Transportation on our Zoom call. Yes, Aloha and Chair Baker. Um, this is Julia Kalevi from the um, Honolulu Department of Transportation Services. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in strong support of the measure. We are seeking clarification in the law that um, the transit card that we now have, which we hope to expand to other payments for city fees, um, is clarified that it is not a gift card and is not subject to other requirements that are um, required of gift cards and gift certificates. Um, we currently allow and use and accept as, as a fair medium the holo card on the bus. We are looking to expand that to the handyman as well as to the rail upon uh, start of rail operations and 
um, starting in July, we're going to discontinue paper passes. So for bus passes, we'll be using only whole cards. So as we seek to deploy as widely as possible use of this new smart transit card, we are seeking this clarification in the law just to uh, best support implementation um, of the card. And so we're available for any questions of the committee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Members, we have no other testimony. As indicated, this is a proposal offered by the City and County of Honolulu uh, Transit, uh, Transit Authority. Uh, any questions for our testifier? If not, uh, let's go forward to the next item on our agenda. This is House Bill 941, House Draft 1. This is relating to the use of electronic filing by the Public Utilities Commission. Uh, this is a governor's package bill. And I believe our first testifier, um, actually the, the bill would allow electronic filing um, for electronic filing processes and similar practices, trying to make uh, their, um, update their processes as well as make them accessible to others. Uh, Dean, are you joining us on the, on the call this morning from DCCA, Dean Nishida? Chair, this is Lisa Fuel Can you turn up your volume? We cannot, we can barely hear you. Chair, this is Lisa Hiraoka. I'm standing in for Dean Nishina this morning. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Um, good morning, Chair Baker, Vice Chair Chang, and committee members. Lisa Hiraoka for the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. The department stands on its written testimony in support of the measure, and we are available for questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have Mr. Griffin, Jay Griffin, the chair of the PUC, on the call? Aloha, Chair Baker, Vice Chair Chang, member of the committee. This is Michael Chapman on behalf of Jay Griffin. The commission stands on its testimony in support, and we're available if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have uh, Kirby Shaw submitted from DCAB submitting uh, some comments and some concerns. I don't believe uh, Kirby was planning to be with us. And our final testifier on my list is James Abraham, Hawaii Electric Company. Do we have a? Good morning, Chair Baker. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Baker and members of the committee. My name is James Abraham, testifying on behalf of the Hawaii Electric Company in support of HB 941. Uh, we stand on our written testimony uh, submitted to the committee and are available for any questions. Thank okay. you. All right, that comes, uh, that brings us to the end of our testifiers list on House Bill 941. Members, do you have any questions for any of our testifiers that have joined us on Zoom? If not, shall we go forward to House Bill 943, House Draft 1? This is relating to non-depository trusts. It establishes provisions concerning non-depository trust committees, including powers and duties, literally assessment calculations, paid in capital, and surplus requirements. This is also an, a governor's package measure. I believe joining us this morning on Zoom is um, the DFI commissioner, Iris Iketa. Iris, are you there? I see you. Aloha, Chair Baker and members of the committee. Yes, this is an administration um, measure, which of course we support. and. Um, you know, we had um, offered this bill to the, as part of the governor's package because we see that there is a gap group of consumers who are unable to um, have their wealth managed by um, wealth managers or large banks because their primary source of wealth is their home. So what this bill does is to allow for qualified non-depository trust companies to serve as fiduciaries. Um, for this gap group. I would note that we already chartered what the very first um, non-depository trust company in 2009, um, and they have been in operation, and we um, are continuously supervising them. For this particular measure, we would like um, three amendments to this bill. Um, one is a tech, the first one is a technical one, which is to underscore the words on page six, line 14, or total assets under management, which is a new term that's being used. The second item is that the department is requesting a section 
to authorize GFI to expend $4,000 of funds as may be necessary to administer the food program, and those funds would come from the CRF. And last, we would like the effective date to be amended from January 1, 2050 to uh, um, take effect July 1, 2021. And I'm available to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. Uh, I don't see any others that have uh, submitted testimony or indicated that they would be testifying on this uh, administration measure. Are there any questions for Ms. Ikeda? Yes, sorry. Senator Sam Buenaventura. Um, Ms. Ikeda, uh, th this interests me because um, I do general practice and there's always a need for, especially, um, yeah, upon death for the, the, that sole big asset you talked about. How was that non-depository trust come into being the state of Hawaii without this law? I mean, why do we need this if you folks were able to manage one? Right, so that's a good question. So we were able to charter that first non-depository trust company by waiving a lot of the provisions that we have in our bank trust laws um, and you know, it was um, confusing for the um, for this first charter company um, to navigate through the bank trust laws and you know identify those areas where it would not apply to them. So, for instance, in this um, bank charter that we gave to the non depository, they have a lot of restrictions that we have you know kind of baked into this particular draft. They cannot accept um, deposits because they are not being insured by the FDIC. They're not able to um, do investments without a proper investment advisor. You know, they can't do certain things that banks are, who have the expertise can already do. So this law would make it um, you know, a lot easier, I think, for um, companies who are um, providing this particular type of trust activity to um, to apply and get chartered by us. Okay, so but you folks still require some kind of bonding or insurance type requirement, right? Oh yes, right. <laughs> okay, yeah. and, 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 and it I'm is pretty high. <laughs> and I'm just curious, um, where is this charter company? Where is this? Where is that? Yeah, or, or the or the name of it? Can you can you text me offline? It's on a wall. Well, the name of the company is a public record. It's, it's right on our website. It's called CSI. Okay, thank you. Sure. The name of a very interesting uh, TV show. Too, right. Well, <laughs> thank you. Okay, any other questions for Ms. Ikeda? No. If not, members, thank you, Senator, uh, for asking the question. Uh, let's move forward to House Bill 286, House Draft 1. This is relating to real estate investment trusts, or REITs as they are known, authorizes the Department of Taxation to require real estate investment trusts to notify the department of its presence within the state and to report the assets and revenues generated annually. Uh, let's see. Let's hear from the Department of Taxation. Mr. Choi, are you on or a representative from DOTAX? Uh, yes, Chair. Jonathan White on behalf of the Director of Tax. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the Department supports this bill. Um, this is not an administration bill, but we are supporting it. We believe it's a good idea to add um, this fine structure to the requirements for REITs filing that are already there, um, but this will add a, a fine for non-compliance with those requirements. We think this will add to our ability to collect um, good data on REITs as REITs keeps you know, coming up every year at the legislation, we'll be able to provide even better data on that. Um, so we support the bill for that, for that reason. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to note that uh, Senator Favela has joined us as well. Uh, so thank you, Senator, for joining us. Uh, we have testimony on this measure from HSTA. Is Laverne Moore on or a representative from HSTA? Yes. Good morning. I'm on. Good morning, Chair Baker. 
Um, I'm Laverne Moore, speaking on behalf of Corey Rosenley, president of the Hawaii State Teachers Association. I stand on our written testimony in support of House Bill 286 with suggested amendments. Although this bill is a start, it does not go far enough and it needs to be amended to include the language needed from Senate Bill 2697 in 2020 Ritz Bill. Hawaii has some of the most highly coveted real estate in the nation, not only because of our scenery, our tourist destination, and status as an urban hub in the middle of the Pacific, but also because it has the lowest property tax rate in the nation. Unlike corporate investors, investors in real estate investment trusts are exempt from paying corporate income tax on dividends. Thus, dividends from RITs are taxed only once at the shareholders level, and these taxes are paid in the form of income tax to the investor's home state. And not a single penny in taxes come to Hawaii for the use of our resources, our sewer system, our waterways, our roads. As a history teacher, this is a form of colonization. Grids invest in Hawaii's real estate, Hawaii's commodity, take the profits generated back to its home state, like back in the early days, and they leave the residents of Hawaii high and dry. Rents should be paying taxes in the state where they are generating their income from. This is what I call paying your fair share for the use of our resources. The Hawaii State Teachers Association implores you to add language to this bill that would disallow dividends paid deductions for real estate investment trusts, as this would provide a dedicated revenue stream to help end the teacher shortage crisis make up for other losses in state revenue and to provide a disincentive to the real estate investment and speculation driving up property values in our state. We ask you to support this bill with amendments. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Laverne. Our next testifier on Zoom is Will Karen, Young Progressives Demanding Action. Aloha Chair Baker, Will Crone for Young Progressives Demanding Action. Uh, we stand on our written testimony and support with requested amendments echoing HSTA's request to implement an actual tax. We feel there's no good reason to wait on this. But I also wanted to mention a new report that I didn't have time to incorporate into my written testimony. The report is from Cornell University and it's titled The Myth of the Millionaire Tax Flight, How Place Still Matters for the Rich. And as the title states pretty clearly, the report predicts that relocation uh, will remain minimal because wealthy people actually stay put. Um, the report author, Christopher Young, is a sociology professor and he looked at data to determine that the effects of tax increases in places like California and New Jersey barely cause an uptick in interstate migration, which stands at about 2.4% among uh, millionaires. Tax flight is a primary talking point employed by REITs and wealthy individuals to scare us into thinking that these taxes are bad, but in truth, they simply don't want to pay more taxes. As the report author states, they live, rich people, live where they become successful, where they have industry connections, employees, and customers, and where they sit on nonprofit boards. Meaning that the idea that there's gonna be a, an outward migration of our, our wealthy people if we were to implement a tax on REITs is simply just not true. So I just wanted to add that and mahalo for your time. Okay, thank you very much. Our next uh, testifier on Zoom is Tom Yamachika, Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Tom is not available, Chair. Okay. Uh, we have his written testimony. Uh, Gladys Quinto Marone, Narit, Hawaii. Thank you, Chair Baker. Chair Baker. Good morning, uh, Chair, Vice Chair Chang, members of the committee. Gladys Marone on behalf of Narit, Hawaii. Uh, we'll stand on our written testimony on 
comments on this measure and are available for any questions. We appreciate the opportunity to provide testimony. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have Paul Oshiro for Alexander and Baldwin. Good morning, Paul. Hi, good morning, Chair. Paul Oshiro representing Alexander and Baldwin. We'll stand on our written comments. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we have testimony from Trinity United Methodist Church. Amy Wake. Uh, testimony in support, Our Revolution Hawaii. Testimony in support, Imua Alliance. Testimony in support, Democratic Party of Hawaii. Testimony in support, Hawaii Children's Action ne Network Speaks in support, Faith Action for Community Equity in support, League of Women Voters in support, Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center in support, Securities Industry Association of Hawaii in opposition. We have comments from Park Hotels and Resorts, Catherine Camp, Douglas Emmett. Uh, we have comments and support from Dina Espin Espinas, Jason Schuster, William Beckermeyer, Christy McPherson, Ellen Godby Carson, Alexandra Chi, Elizabeth Nelson, Jessica Kawamura, uh, Mary Carolyn Kuahulu, Keith Webster, Fern Anui Nui Holland, Diane S. Martinson, Carla Allison, I'm sorry, Carla Allison, Tony Redmilovich, Carolyn Eaton, Noel Kent, Danner Vanine, uh, Joan Jensen, Calvin Fu Pham, Kristen Young, Lawrence Franco, John Kawamoto, Galen Fox, Mer Marilyn Nick, Kathy Jaycock, Shan Che Hodges, Zach Stoddard, Matthew Geyer, Neil McPherson. And we have late testimony from um, Marshall Hung. Uh, Shannon Rudolph in support. Americans for Democratic Action, Don John Bickle, Evelyn Ha'o in support, Mary Weir in support, John Tomoso in support, Jennifer Azuma uh, Trupalik uh, in support, Linda Morgan in support, Ra uh, Randolph Moore in support. Any other testifiers on this measure? If not, members, any questions for any of the testifiers that we heard from? Uh, if not, let's go to the last item on our agenda. And this one is House Bill 1192, uh, the ever famous payday lending bill uh, related to consumer protection is the exact title of the measure. Uh, this would try to put some order and make sure that uh, consumers are not being ripped off. Um, Iris Ikeda, DCCA. Aloha, Chair Baker. I'm Iris Ikeda, the Commissioner for the Division of Financial Institutions. And first, I'd like to thank you for continuing to hear um, different measures to try to help consumers get out of the debt, um, the debt cycle that they're in by using various state aid lenders. Um, the department continues, or the division continues to work with um, different uh, folks in the industry, um, both the mom and pop and the large, um, large companies, as well as our um, non-depository financial service loan companies, um, which offer consumer loans um, similar to the ones that are offered through payday lending. So what we, you know, during the pandemic, I think that sort of changed our mindset a little bit. And we know that um, that going to an installment loan product, which is um, definitely our preference, um, would cost a significant outlay of funding for new software for a lot of small businesses, and we think that that would be a burden that some of the small burden, some of the small businesses would not be able to sustain. 
Um, and so for that reason, we have decided to take a different approach and um, propose to repeal the um, check cashers that's found in Chapter 480F um, and move that um, whole regime into DFI licensing scheme that we can license all of the um, check cashers as one of the industries. Um, we would supervise them, regulate them, ask for reports, and most importantly, examine them um, to make sure that they are following all of the um, laws, um, the consumer protection laws. The, the one thing that we are um, mm -hmm. allowing for, um, just because we've heard from the industry, is to allow for an amortization of deferred check transactions of not less than six months. If the consumer makes this request on the basis of hardship, or if the consumer is unable to repay the deferred check transaction after three terms. We also want to cap the maximum allowable fees at 50% of the original deferred check transaction amount. We want to cap the fee for um, extended repayment for consumers. Right now, um, in the bill, we propose that there is only one um, fee for that. We also want to cap the maximum allowable deferred check transaction to $600 require that check cashers provide disclosures, allow for only one check, deferred check transaction per consumer um, so that they don't um, pile on additional ones, and require full licensures for check cashers. Um, we did um, provide a, an extensive um, bill proposal for your consideration, um, and I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next on Zoom, we have James O'Dell, Dollar Financial Group, in support. Well, thank you. Um, I'm coming through. Uh, yes, I'm Jim are. O'Dell, the, the General Counsel and Vice President of DFC Global. Uh, we are one of the larger companies that Commissioner Ikeda referred to. Earlier, um, I'd like to reiterate on behalf of the FCR support for the House bill. Um, but per feedback and discussions we've had with DFI, we'd like to repeat um, um, that uh, we, we feel that there should be three amendments to the bill in three primary areas. Uh, the first is the bill should consolidate supervision and licensing under DFI of both the amended and approved for deposit transactions and the new installment limit product, as Commissioner Ada indicated a few moments ago. Uh, second, um, we'd suggest that it's it's not advisable to automatically sunset and terminate the deferred deposit transactions. Uh, instead, we would recommend the bill be amended um, to uh, give DFI the opportunity to evaluate the efficacy of the, the, the changes that the bill is putting for uh, these enhancements to deferred deposit transactions will make uh, will take some time uh, to take effect and DFI should have the opportunity to gauge their effectiveness before any decision is made uh, about deferred deposit transactions. You know, in addition, the new installment lending product will also need uh, some time to get traction in Hawaii and new lenders with the capability to provide that product will have to come in and make the investments in order to do so. Um, third, uh, we would suggest that if it's necessary uh, to accommodate, you know, any funding or resourcing constraints, particularly with regard to licensing uh, and supervision, uh, particularly for this new IL product, uh, that that supervision and licensing be sequenced or, or delayed, uh, we would strongly suggest that the terms for the new installment lending product uh, be established now um, uh, as provided for uh, in the House bill. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, joining us again is Richard Dan, Maui Loan. Mr. Dan, are you there? Aloha, Senator Baker. Can you folks hear me? Yes, we can. Aloha. 
My name is Richard Dan. I own Maui Loan. Uh, we're a small mom and pop paycheck lender that's been in Maui uh, for over four decades. Uh, we've been doing check cashing for over four decades. We've been doing payday loans since 480F came into existence. Um, the payday loan industry is um, pretty much collapsed in the state of Hawaii at this point in time because not many people are working. The pandemic has really ravaged the industry. On Maui, there's pretty much just two people, Money Mart, which is uh, part of uh, Dollar Corporation, which is a Canadian corporation, people who you just spoke with, who was just testifying. Um, and this is a big, large corporation, and uh, they, 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 they have lobbyists who push through uh, different types of legislation. They've been doing it, trying to push through their lot legislation for the last five or six years in Hawaii. Uh, this legislation will put the mom and pop payday lenders that are, we have here in, in Hawaii uh, in a position where we can't do these loans anymore. Uh, this is a pandemic, there's nothing going on. Can we just hold off on this for a few years before uh, we, we allow some big corporation to take over the industry here? Uh, there's no problems with the existing law. I do recommend that we put a three-day hold between payday loans, which were, uh, Senator Baker agreed with me on, on the last time this came up. Uh, there are there are few, if any, complaints at uh, consumer protection. I just spoke with Iris on the Iris from DFI on the phone. She agreed with me that there are very few cl uh, complaints about Hawaii businesses doing this at the at consumer at uh, uh, the regulatory agency that governs us. So, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Just to go ahead and accommodate some Canadian company who wants to put everybody out of business and have a monopoly in Hawaii? That doesn't make sense to me, especially now with business so bad. Please, I oppose this bill. Please just defer it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have uh, Nick Burke, Pew Charitable Trust. Uh, he sent some extensive... Uh, comments and Pew has been very much in the forefront of trying to make sure that uh, payday loans are actually uh, not anti-consumer, which many of them have been. Uh, joining us on Zoom, I believe, is Mr. Marvin Dang, Hawaii Financial Services Association. Good morning, Marvin. Good morning, uh, Chair Baker and, and members of the committee. Marvin Dang, attorney for the Hawaii Financial Services Association. Uh, we had submitted comments on this bill and proposed amendments, uh, not only for the House version, uh, but if the uh, committee was going to utilize Senate Bill 974, we, our comments uh, were regarding that. Uh, subsequent to the time that I submitted the testimony, uh, I got a chance to uh, review the Commissioner of Financial Institutions uh, proposed draft. Uh, the only comment that I have is with regard to the reference in the exemptions to financial service loan companies. It should be financial services loan companies uh, as is stated in the Code of Financial Institutions, Article 9. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to offer comment on House Bill 1192? Members, do you have any questions? Uh, I believe this brings us to the end of our agenda. So let's take a brief recess and see if we can do some decision making recess. Thank you. We will reconvene the Committee on Commerce and Consumer Protection. Uh, let me just let everybody know who is uh, joining us today on Zoom. We have the Vice Chair, Stanley Chang, Senator Chang. We have uh, Senator Favela and Senator Michelucha. And in the room in 229, we have Senator Riviere, Senator San Buenaventura, and Senator Nishihara, who, because he sits closest to the 
The staff table is always tasked with taking our role. Thank you, Senator Nishihara. Okay, uh, the first item on our agenda this morning is House Bill 352, House Draft 1. This is relating to secondhand dealers. Um, chair recommends that we pass this with language reflecting the language in Senate Bill 925, Senate Draft 2, further clarifying amendments from ECO-ATM and a clean effective date of 1-1-2022. Any questions or comments? If not, Chair votes aye. Senator Chang? Aye. Clarence, are you gonna call the roll for me? Yeah, okay, <laughs> just clarifying. We're talking we're, about. Uh, we're talking about House Bill 352, House Draft 1, to pass oh, it with amendments. Okay, got it. Okay. I thought you were going to defer it, so. No. <laughs> Threw me off. And Chair votes aye. Senator Chang voted aye. Okay. Uh, Ms. Senator Ms. Lucha. Aye. Ishar goes aye. Senator Revere. Aye. Sem, uh, Senator Sam Ventura. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Motion's adopted. Okay, thank you, members. We're on track and on a roll here. Okay. okay, the next item on our agenda this morning was House Bill 149, House Draft 1, relating to gift certificates. Uh, clarifies that cards issued by a county for purpose of paying transit fares and county fees and other uses are not subject to the state's unfair and deceptive practices regulation related to gift certificates. Chair, this is a city and county of Honolulu package. Chair recommends we pass this measure with amendments um, inserting a clean effective date of 1-1-2022. Any questions or comments? If not, Chair votes aye. Senator Chang? Aye. Senator uh, Ms. Lucia? Aye. Nishar goes aye. Senator Revere? Aye. Senator San Ventura? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Motion's adopted. The next uh, measure is a governor's package bill, House Bill 941, House Draft 1, relating to the use of electronic filing by the PUC. Chair recommends that uh, we pass this measure with amendments establishing an effective date of 1 1 2022 and include language that the PUC will continue to make provisions to ensure the accessibility of their electronic filing process and file documents so that they will be available by all members of the public. This is to address a concern um, that uh, DCAB had brought forward. Any questions or comments? If not, Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Senator Chang. Was it an aye? It was an aye. Yeah, oh, okay. said it really softly. <laughs> Senator Ms. Lucha. Aye. Senator Nishar goes aye. Senator Revere. Aye. Senator Sandpoint Ventura. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Motion is adopted. Thank you, members. The next item on our agenda is House Bill 943, House Draft 1, relating to non-depository trusts. This is also a governor's package measure. Chair recommends that we pass this with amendments. There's some technical, non-substantive amendments that were recommended by SMA and um, the testimony in, uh, called them out in DFI's testimony. Uh, and let's see, let's uh, provide a clean effective date, which would be upon uh, this act upon its approval shall take place July 1, 2021. Any questions or comments? If not, Chair votes aye. Pass with amendments. Of the members present, any voting with reservations or opposition? Seeing none, motions adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Senate Bill 286, Senate, uh, House Draft 1, relating to real estate investment trusts. Uh, Chair recommends that we pass this measure with amendments making it effective 1-1-2022 uh, uh, in section two change 
May to shall. The first filing with DOTEC shall begin once the REIT begins operation in the state, but no longer than 15 days after the operation begins. For current, for REITs currently operating the state, filing with DOTEC shall commence 1-15-2022. Um, any questions or comments? If not, Chair votes aye. Of the members present, any voting in um, reservations or in opposition? Seeing none, motion is adopted. Thank you. House Bill 1192 relating to consumer protection. Um, this has to do with um, deferred deposit transactions. Um, Chair recommends that we pass this with amendments inserting the contents of Senate Bill 974, Senate Draft 2, with an effective date. Oh, that's right, sorry. Um, I, didn't, I didn't get down to this, this portion to uh, make the changes. Uh, we're gonna defer uh, this measure um, because we are looking at the, the um, the draft that DFI gave us. So uh, this is this is payday lending. So we'll and we've got uh, Pew's uh, items in there. So we're going to defer this one until what date are we deferring this one to? Thursday, March 18th. Okay, Thursday, March 18th, in conference room 229 uh, at 10:15. We have another agenda that morning, so it will come at the end of that agenda. And does this bring us to the end of our hearing? Thank you, members, for your attendance and your participation. We will see you either on the floor or on another Zoom call. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.